Hey, oh. Yeah, How you doing? I'm just curious what uh, what's been the challenge of getting all these guys in here, rolling them through like a uh, you know like a little bit of a meet and greet, I guess. You know, with all the new faces, and and how's that been for you? Actually, it's been really good. I mean, the guys that we've uh, that we've brought in here, um, you know, whether it's been a transitional period, whether it's been free agency or guys that have been coming in as camp started. Um, they've been doing a great job. I mean, they, these guys are really receptive. You know, they want to learn, they want to understand what we're doing schematically. You know, they want to know each other in and out. We spend a lot of time in meetings, not only going over, you know, what we got to do from a practice standpoint or a game standpoint or situation standpoint, but we do a lot of talking to amongst each other, getting to know, Hey, what are you good at? What are you good at? So we can get out there together and understand, Hey man, this is this guy's strengths. This is this guy's weakness or something that he needs to work on. And these guys have been really doing a great job of being receptive to each other and honing in on each other. Good, Mark. I'm good. Yeah, for now. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Gary Smiths and then John Shipley. Thanks, Coach. <clears throat> uh, last year it was linebacker room that had a lot of had a lot of injuries. And this year, is it tough for a position coach not to sit back and say, you know, woe is me? And when you feel snake bit like that, what's the best approach you can take with you and your guys? Yeah, you know. It's easy to point a finger, but that's, that's not who we are. I mean, that's, that's not, you know, my dad raised me. I, I, my dad, uh, my dad raised bird dogs when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, his, his deal was if, if you shot a shotgun and that dog shied away, he, that dog wasn't a bird dog anymore. So, you know, you, you could sit there and say, Hey, these are the guys that we got, or, or these are the people that we have. And, uh, you know, you, you, you shoot those shotguns off and you say, Hey, let's, let's, let's go, let's blast and uh, let's get out there and play with whatever, which ones we got out there. Hey, thanks coach. Thank you, Smitter. Let's go over to John Shipley. Hey coach. I know uh, hey, DeWan Smoot had a pretty productive season last year. Just what kind of growth have you seen from him since he really, uh, you first got here to coach him and what have you seen from him in camp so far? Yeah, he's uh, had substantial growth. I mean, uh, and uh, you talk about a guy that wants to hone in on his craft. Um, you know, he, he shows up. He's, you know, he, he, he's had probably a little chip on his shoulder since his first rookie year until really transitioning into more of a, of a role of a player, um, especially in the third down stuff that we did from a year ago. And uh, he's having one heck of a camp, you know, I mean, sometimes it takes some guys, you know, some learning curve and, and uh, understanding what we're doing from a technique standpoint and scheme standpoint and uh, Smoot's doing one heck of a job. Not only that, but in the classroom and on the field, he's becoming one heck of a leader. You know, I mean, you, you, sometimes you look at that room and you say, oh yeah, you try to pin out who the leaders are and you got Abe and, you know, you got Josh and. And Timmy Jordan, again, has been a real good pleasure to come in here. A guy that's been in the league a bunch of years. Uh, but Dewan Smoot is one heck of a leader in that room. You know, people listen to him. People understand what he can do and what he can bring. So, uh, but yeah, we really enjoy what he's been doing from a defensive end standpoint and then what he gives us value on third down. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Shipley. Mark, I assume you put the hand back up for a, a dog question. <laughs> You know me well, Tad. Absolutely. You got to go back to bird dogging. It, I mean, like, <laughs> seriously, that's what your dad did for a living or just a hobby? Yeah, it was a living and a hobby. You know, I grew up uh, next to a, uh, uh, a milk farm and uh, my dad uh, was more of a carpenter by trade. But, uh, you know, we had everything that you could think of from a garden to, to rabbits to obviously bird dogs and uh but yeah, I was around Britney Spaniels for a long time as uh, as a little kid, and uh, I figured out at a young age that uh, that working dogs do not have a name; they are uh, they're strictly a working dog. So, just following up on that, are you still into that at this? At this, <laughs> I mean, or is that long gone? Don't you know, have time. Don't it, have it, interest. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you say that. You know, this is probably my twenty uh, second or something, twenty third year coaching, and I've missed. Uh, 
opening day of hunting season for 23 straight years now. So, um, yeah, you know, obviously it's, uh, I, I love do it, you know, uh, uh, luckily I have three kids and they watch the outdoor channel with me and, uh, uh, have aspirations of, of having and fulfilling that stuff with them, hopefully someday. But, uh, I haven't, uh, fulfilled a lot of bird, uh, hunting stories as, as much as I did as a kid. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Let's go over to John Reed and then d -Rock. How you doing, Coach? Um, back to Smoot. I mean, you've been up and close and personal with him. And, um, man, when you look back on when he was there, I mean, his guy done tried to change his diet. He done added weight, lost weight, almost got felt that he was going to be cut. What What is it about his persistence to just to try to be a – a rotational player, a, a good player. I mean, it just seems like this guy does everything and has tried to do everything since he's been here to be a good player. Yeah, you, you hit a lot of them. You know, there's there's been some frustrations on both ends. You know, like you said, I mean, he had some frustrations from a playing standpoint. You know, obviously, you know, you brought up some of the diet things that he potentially went through earlier in his career. But, you know, we've always sat down and had candid conversations, you know, I mean, to me, I think part of coaching is having a relationship with these young men. And if I can't sit down with them, no different than I'm doing with you guys and have a candid conversation of what I see or what I believe, whether it's right or wrong, we can at least talk about it as men. And, um, you know, that's what we did, you know, Dewan and I, we sat down on several occasions, you know, throughout his career that he's been here and they've all been great conversations. You know, we all leave that room, you know, whether, you know, we don't sit there and point to, oh, you're right, you're right, you're wrong, you're wrong. You know, we walk out of that room and we say, Hey man, once we close that door, whatever we decided in this room, Hey, that's what we're going with. And, um, and he's been really good at holding up that end of the, you know, what we're asking him to do. And, um, and it shows, you know, the guy's gone out there and, and, uh, you know, to piggyback on what you said from a year ago, um, obviously that hard work paid off for him and hopefully it benefits for us here in the near future. Thank you, coach. Thanks, John Reed. Let's go over to D-Rock and then Gene Fournette. Taven's biggest area of growth over the last year or so that you see? Yeah, Taven, you know, kind of going a little bit about his background. I mean, you guys all know he's he's one of the most gifted, physical, strong, um, athletic big man at 200, you know, 95, 298 pounds. Um, but it was really what the thing is, is that Taven at times overanalyzes some things, you know, and it's analyzed by paralysis or paralysis by analysis, however you want to say it. And, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing that we've transitioned here, you know, in the first part of camp is saying, Taven, here's your three things that you got to do on each snap. That's it. That's it. And if you can hone in on those three things and not let yourself wander around and look at this and look at that and guess, and if you can hone on on that, good things are going to happen. And, um, hopefully all you guys have watched some tape, you know, for the last few, you know, nine or 10 practices, Tave and Brian is having one heck of a camp. Now he's showing up quite a bit, you know, and, and his running and his, his toughness, you know, at the point of attack and how he strains, um, it's showing. And I'm going to tell you this, his confidence level is coming with that too. You know, everybody wants to get a pat on the back. Everybody does. And when other guys in that room, you know, they sit there and they look at it, they see it, you know, when he shows up and he starts getting those pats on the back, you know, that confidence breeds a lot, man. And, um, you can see that Taven has really adopted it now and seeing it a little bit, you know, you could say slower or quicker, however you want to say it, you know, the game slows down for some people and, and it's definitely working for him. And, uh, we're looking for a lot of good things from that young man. Was he discouraged at all over the last year or so from maybe not getting the kind of pass on the back you're talking about if, or, or not playing as quickly as you wanted or, or not being at the spot where he wanted to be, you know, not developmentally? Yeah, I don't know if discouraged, you know, frustrated. Maybe that's the same type of a word, I guess, maybe for you. But, yeah, obviously <laughs> anybody's going to be frustrated, um, you know. But, you know, I think he, you sit down with him and you watch him. You know, and you go over the plays and you, and, you, and you start saying, hey, 
you know, see this other man, he's, he's making that play a lot better than you are right here. And this is what you got to do to get better. So, um, yeah, I, yeah. Anybody's going to be frustrated in a situation like that, but like I talked about with Smoot, I mean, you know, these guys, they're men. And if you treat them like men and you talk to them like men and they have an idea that you got their back and, you know, you bring some energy every day to them, you know, these guys, they're going to play. They're going to play for themselves and obviously play for each other and win, go win for the championship. Thank you. Speaking of a guy that needs a pat on the back, let's go over to Gene. Thanks, Ted. Love you. Anyway, uh, Coach, uh, following up with Taven. Uh, you 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 mentioned earlier that he maybe had times ten, tendency to overanalyze things a little bit. Uh, in the first couple of years, there's no question. You know, the fans were on him. You know, because he was a first round pick and they wanted to see more production. How do you think he handled all that? Are you implying that you know maybe he let it get to him in any way, or did he, or did you think that he he handled it uh, pretty well? You know, behind the scenes. Yeah, it, it, I don't know how much. You know, luckily I have a personal relationship with that young man. And if you know Taven Bryan, Taven Bryan doesn't care what the outside world says about this guy. He just, that, that's not Taven, you know, and he, he takes more to heart what other people are saying in that room, you know, whether it's a fellow D lineman, whether it's a coach, whether it's, you know, coach Walsh, coach Marone, whoever it is. So, um, I personally never heard any type of a story brought up of, you know, this is wrote about me in the paper or this, that, and the other. That's, that's not Taven. Taven is, uh, he's more to himself and he, he'd rather listen to his peers to get himself better or more prepared to what he needs to do. As a follow-up to, uh, to Taven, it's year three now for him. Are you, are you expecting uh, you know, a, a bit of a jump for him now that he's he's got two years behind him because certainly defensive tackle is, is certainly not one of the easier positions to just yeah. come in and have an impact. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, the closer you get to the ball, fellas, you know, at the heart of the game is. And, uh, um, you know, so we transitioned to him, as you guys know, and playing a little bit more D-end early in his career, you know, to kind of pick up the speed and then obviously transition him now down to his home position as a three technique. Um, so yeah, there, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a learning curve. There's a growth. And do I see that? Like I stated earlier, there is no doubt. I mean, Taven is mentally, physically understanding what we're asking him to do um, from a strain standpoint in the run game. Um, and, and guys see it, like I said, you know, there, there, there's a lot of confidence going into that young man right now. Thanks. Thank you, Gene. Let's finish up with John Osher. Hey, Reds, how are you? Um, John, how you doing, man? Uh, in terms of Devon Hamilton, tell me how tough it is as a nose, as a rookie to play and, and contribute and how is he doing with it? And, you know, obviously some expectations for him this year. Yeah. Like I stated earlier, I mean, um, the closer you get to that ball, the harder it is, you know, I mean, that thing is snapped and it's quick. And, it, and this kid is really, really, not only is he a big kid, the kid's smart as heck now. Um, you know, and, he, and he's, he's, he's on himself all the time about being technically correct. Um, and, and he's got some athletic ability for 335 pounds now. You watch him run over the top and make some plays from sideline, you know, from the hash to the sideline. That kid can run that alley. Um, so there's been a lot of really good things we've seen in a short period of time with D-Ham. Um, and, and, and it's going to continue to grow. You know, I mean, transitioning from a high-profile college, you know, is Ohio State and he's played in a lot of big games. You know, he's going to transition very well. You know, he, he knows the stresses of – of what it is to compete at a high level. He's done it for how many years he was at Ohio state. So, um, we're looking for a lot of really good things for this young man, you know, and Avery Jones has done one heck of a job of putting this guy around his shoulder. You know, Abe is the leader of that group. I know you guys have talked about that for the last few days or whatnot. Um, and, and, and Abe is, has done a phenomenal job of teaching him on the run, coaching him up as he's going, and, and, and seeing different things and how to play that block, whether it's a pull scheme or getting vertical or whatever he needs to do. But D ham has got a really, really bright future. Thanks coach. Thanks Rebs. We got one more that just came in from John Shipley and we'll finish up with that. 
Hey, Coach. Uh, I, I know you mentioned Timmy Jernigan earlier. Just, uh, what kind of uh, energy and what kind of really uh, play have you seen from him uh, so far? Yeah. The few well, weeks you guys have had him. Yeah, obviously you're talking about the energy because you guys have seen it, I'm sure, on film, uh, other practice. You know, I mean, there's no secret. Timmy, Timmy brings some energy now. You know, he's he's a really a humble man. I don't know if you guys have had any relationship from Florida State or whatnot, but he's a really a humble man. And uh, when he gets out there and it's time to put that helmet on and the shoulder pads and mosey out to practice, he's going to tell you he's there. You know, whether it's by his play or whether he's going to, he's going to let you know with some hooting and hollering and, and, uh, you know, that, and that's what we need. You know, we, we pin that, you know, in our, in our, uh, um, in our positional meetings, you know, we'll watch it and say, Hey fellas, this is what we need, man. If you can't have fun and have energy of playing this position, then this isn't the place for you, you know, and, and Timmy is, I, I really enjoy it. You know, I, I, Timmy Jernigan is, is, is going to be a great attribute for us, a great addition. And I'm looking for a lot of good things from him. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Rebs. I know you got to run, so you could take off. I got a couple updates for the media.